Good morning, folks. I'm going to throw a lot at you today, so knock the dust off. We're starting at our star in 171 angstroms and finding the bright active regions. As we come over to spaceweathernews.com and back out to see the Earth-facing half, we can see a day of calm, barely any sunspots to the groupings, and definitely no flares or eruptions. Coronal hold departing to the western limb. So back here at Earth, we're seeing the above-average solar wind continuing, but having stabilized the geomagnetic conditions reverberated once back into storm status last night, but are stabilizing as well. That coronal hole is the source of the excess intensity solar wind, and we've maybe got another day before the stream begins to wane and calmer conditions return. The top magnitude earthquake of the last day was a 5.6, capping a flurry of foreshocks in Central America over the weekend, but it was not the most thought-provoking quake of the day. As many of you have seen, a 4.5 struck off the coast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico. It is not of major magnitude and not by itself of much significance, but it reminded me of numerous issues surrounding this region, from the false stories about a heat anomaly in the water which is absolutely not real, to the disastrous dead zone which is real, but also of a longer term issue. Let's go ahead and search the global earthquake records for magnitude 5 earthquakes and higher all the way back to 1900 and we'll confine the region to the Gulf of Mexico here. There have been only three recorded quakes of that magnitude here in more than 100 years, and all in a stretch from 2006 to 2007. I remember back then reading about the asphalt volcanoes beneath the Gulf and how they were becoming a major concern, along with the New Madrid fault line. Then, oil drilling picked up. A few four-pointers struck the U.S. inland near the New Madrid, and then in 2010, someone, quote, accidentally let a huge hole open up and release tons of pressure, I mean oil, and since then, yesterday's 4.5 is about the only thing we've seen. It's gone quiet, perhaps a topic for another day. This footage is coming out of Turkey, where a deluge lasting just nine minutes dropped more water than most could imagine was possible in that short a time. FYI, just before what you're seeing here, the guy riding the hood just missed getting hit by a truck caught in a super fast current flow. Our first article today is a nod to Dr. August Dunning's insistence that Mars missions are untenable from a manned mission perspective due to radiation concerns. In this paper, they determined that the solar max contribution to radiation dose with the best shielding available is more than 10 sieverts per year on that trip. Add that to the background cosmic rays and it is very scary. The higher end of that cosmic ray scale is solar minimum and beyond survivable. And while the 3 looks encouraging on the other side of that sliding scale, it takes solar max to get you there and just look at the line above. It is a one-way trip in an expensive coffin trying to send someone to Mars. Up next, we've got an amazing argument that many of the sub-Neptune near-Earth-sized planets thought to be gaseous are actually rocky worlds like Earth with rings instead of a moon. Super cool to think about. Cosmology focus for a moment as galaxy ion deficiencies have been shown to likely involve depletion of ions into solid dust grains, which essentially makes them invisible. This is how I have been defining covert matter. It's dark, it's just normal matter we don't see, largely because of dust. One more story in the cosmology realm, it appears that an incredible explanation for Milky Way dwarf satellite motions and distributions is the stripping of diffuse gas on close approach to the disk, rather than by high dark matter portions of the populations themselves. This is precisely the type of thinking that will reveal the true nature of the universe and the mass discrepancy problem currently explained away by dark matter. If you remember, just a few days ago, we detailed how a surge of current down to the ground preceded the great 2015 Chile earthquake. Well, yesterday, website members got a look at part of the process when the current goes back up to the sky. Deeper look, number 46 on the year, is about magnetic ripples induced by typhoons and tropical storm activity. Tickets for Observing the Frontier 2019 go on sale Wednesday for the Layman Science Conference of the Year. It'll be February 15th through the 17th in the New Valley of the Sun. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 425 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.